Uh, today is November 9th. Uh, once again, thankful to be here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, do something that uh, we call, uh, uh, it's actually aha moments. Uh, so I, I don't know about you guys, but when I learned something new, it's like, oh, wow, that's, you know, that's pretty incredible that the, you know, that the market moves in that way or, or, or whatever it might be. Uh, so uh, Henry and I are going to tag team a little bit, kind of walk through some uh, aha moments. And as always, you know, feel free to hit up the chat room during the course of the discussion. Uh, and then we'll have a little, we'll try to answer those questions as we, uh, as we proceed. So I will turn it over to uh, Henry right now, and then I'll I'll jump in a little bit later with my uh, aha moments. Great. Well, thanks, Brian. Um, and good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country. Um, I'm Henry. I work alongside Brian and Tim, um, and I'm going to share a couple of thoughts. Um, I, I mentioned this last year. I think when people share, it's helpful. Um, I tend to uh, be a you know day trader, or um, you know usually my time frame um, exists one to three days. Um, so I follow Tim in that, but tend to have um, shorter time periods. Um, I'm tend to be catching smaller moves in the market, um, and that I'm going to share a little bit how I watch. Um, uh, how I utilize edge data um, within my own system. And I told Brian this, I said, um, I'm going to tell what I know and, and not try to get into things that I don't. So um, the first thing I want to do, I'll go ahead and share um, my screen. Um, I wanted to take a look here um, at, uh, you know, just reviewing, um, reviewing the, la the last week. Uh, I think I, you know, I think this is, I've traded for now um, almost four years, and this was a, a unique move. Um, but looking back, I wanted to just review it. Um, you know, the things that were happening, we had uh, a broad market sentiment bottom. You know, we talk all, all the time about like new month, new money moves. Um, and then, you know, we had the earnings coming up. And I think my bias is to think that there is going to be more money flowing into the market on those earnings, on bets on earnings. Um, and then, you know, I'll pull up this, this tech portfolio, which um, not to belabor the point because we talked about it, but, um, you know, just historically low short volumes in tech, um, an understanding of, you know, a bottoming sentiment on tech which is not, you know, Brian and I were saying, these are riskier trades. Um, and you have to kind of extend your expectation of um, when you're going to get paid on these sort of things. Um, but one of the things I didn't talk about, look at this alignment within tech, how those things are um, moving so well together. Um, you know, last week we talked about behavior. So we still only have, um, you know, today's a little bit unique. I think we're a bit... Um, I still think we're a bit overextended, if that's my take. But um, that's not what you're asking. The next thing I wanted to talk about was um, is midpoints. So this is a funny little graph. Um, one of our main metrics I'll show right here is um, volatility. So you know, depending on your portfolio size, your risk appetite, all of the above, <clears throat> um, you can adjust your trading style for a, for a particular stock utilizing volatility. Um, and I wanted to make the point, the reason we have a volatility metric, and this may come as old hat to most of you, um, is because the market right now for almost a year, I think, has been in this sort of long, short, um, sort of teeter-totter mode. And so just as before this meeting, I took a screenshot of SPY and, you know, it just just the obvious of here we are, um, you know, the high here we were at this, you know, this 410 number. We, we went down and found it again last week. And here we are right again, sitting at 40, um, 440 on SPY. So just recognizing I think it's Dennis Dick. Um, I know a lot of you guys follow Dennis on Benzinga that. Uh, you know, this fit, this concept of a 50% reversion is like the market makers were seeking out the next move and then we're going halfway backwards. And it's really a, a risk management tool. Um, 
And so when we think about, um, you know, volatility, being able to utilize that in our favor, I think a lot of the time, you know, Tim will say, if I know something, if I know we're getting long in the market, you know, something's down half its volatility, um, that's what we're really talking about is cutting this number in half and applying it to our trades. Um, and just, you know, just the obvious truth is that like, that's where we are at this midpoint in the market. And my question is, do we take back half of this this recent move this past week, or do we kind of go and find this uh, 4450 or um, 4, 445 number? So um, I'll stop there. I'll just pause for a moment. Steve, you, ha you have a question, and then I'll go on to, I want to dig into some options, expirations, graphs I've brought for you guys. I do have a question, and if you can go uh, back to what you were just on there showing, I believe it was uh, tech. Uh, uh -huh. No, in yeah, there you go. Is there any way that you guys can make this? I mean, it's easy when you've only got 12 or 11 different stocks here, but is there any way you can go in and be able to select, first you want the demand, and then you can take that group and pull up uh, market cap or volume and take that group and pull up uh, uh, your demand or supply or volatility. In other words, what what happens when I go through and do this, if they're, you know, it'd be really great to be able to do this with the whole market, but uh, so that you're able to build one on the other on the other rather than you're going to have volatility but then when you go to demand or you go to supply that's going to change all those that are in the volatility that you're looking for are, are you understanding the question that you filter you know i i would um whether or not this answers your question um i'm gonna go um you know obviously we can we can create new portfolios with those different parameters. Um, you know that, right, Steve? I, right, I, I, right. Yeah. Um, but, but you're saying is how do you filter through these and build on top of one another? You know, the right. best way to do that, I think, is having to build um, a new dynamic portfolio. Um, you know, it's not ideal, but those are the two, to the two tools. So I would say, um, you know, if you want something with uh, short volume, uh, less than, you know, build those build those filters. Um, I, I'll show you one portfolio that I have that I, you know, you can either build those those filters into a new portfolio, or I think the alternative is, um, you know, I have this Mega 100, um, which is uh, just, you know, large cap and mega cap stuff. Um, and I'll sort it. I'll sort sort it by market cap. Um, but I understand what you're saying is like it'd be nice to pull my you know anything over a, a ten, all my tens. But really, if you know, look at if you're looking for something at a ten, um, I can see my uh, my market cap. I can see my behavior. So, I, Steve, I, does that answer your question a little bit? We you know I, I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying. We don't have that functionality, but that hopefully was a workaround a little bit. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll keep going, but we could chat afterwards also. Um, so, hey Henry, could, could I could I interrupt you for one moment on that on that topic? Yeah. Could could I share my screen for a second? I think I might have one other workaround for for Steve. Uh, one other way of thinking about that, Steve, is I think. Let's see, are you seeing my screen yet? Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. Okay. There we go. That should be that should be working. Uh, you you could of course drop that into Excel and then work from Excel. Uh, and it, so I'm I'm here on Big Tech where Henry was. You can go to the actions, export to Excel, and then manipulate your Excel spreadsheet. The other way that you could do it is right here at the top. Uh, this little uh, drop down arrow, click on at, click on that, and then you can arrange this the way that you want to. So if you want to look at volatility that's you know 2.6 and above, you know then you can screen it that way. And you want to look at 
uh, supply that's a little bit higher, you can screen it that way. And that will, you can see right away that I dropped like eight components just by that volatility filter and you can screen it further with dollars per trade. Um, I know that doesn't totally accomplish it, but that's also uh, another feature that I will sometimes forget about is this little toggle uh, feature here. And especially if you have, let's say you created a portfolio and you have, you know, 50 names in there and it's just too, uh, it's, it's a little unwieldy. You can walk through here and you can kind of do that uh, exercise and you can filter out some of those names. You're right. I forgot about that. So that's a that's another way that you can kind of kind of look at that. And sorry for <laughs> interrupting, uh, Henry. I just wanted to discuss that while while it was fresh on my oh, mind. No, uh, you're you're great. You, I, I was reminded of that function because I don't use it very often. <laughs> so mm -hmm. oh, that's way easier. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So uh, what I wanted to do now is look at. Um, a couple slides I have of options expirations. Um, you know, a lot of the traders or, you know, people I find and follow, you know, they avoid options expirations. And that's all fine and well. Um, I think what we as Edge users um, probably want to learn is how to utilize Edge. Um, and utilize the context of expirations to be able to trade. So um, this is, if, if you don't have this, we can drop the link in the chat, but this is um, the full options expiration calendar. I might be stealing some of Brian's content right now for the day, um, but let's go back. Um, and I wanna just, I wanna, you know, because I tend to be trying to be pretty precise on my trades, I'm gonna look at, um, the last four months of options expirations and the concept that there tends to be a risk off for options expirations at least the last few months um it's not universal um but the question i have is like when do we risk off for options expiration do we risk off um today or tomorrow uh knowing that options expirations are next week is it um three weeks away um, or, you know, three days away, is it the day of? So I'm gonna, I've pulled this analog for August up. Um, I'm gonna stop talking for a second and I'm gonna just let you look at this for a moment. So I'm gonna give about 10 seconds for you guys to all just look at this. Um, I'm looking at the, you know, the, the couple days before expiration and then the following Wednesday of expiration is where those, the following Tuesday of expirations. And Henry, do you do you have the uh, potential to enlarge your screen a little bit? Is that better? It is. Thank you. Okay. So, um, I'm giving away some of my. See, I love top short volume. Um, it's a really good tool for me. Um, but again wondering when in the expiration cycle so obviously this is august um we begin the market says you know all these hedge funds whatever it might be they say where do we have to be and do we want to take off risk before these expirations so this one week cycle monday to the following tuesday um i'm gonna go to september so here's September. Again, we have top short volume. Um, this was the 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 Thursday. This says thir Tuesday, but it was actually Thursday. Sorry, I'll go back to that. Um, so it was the day of expirations that we risked off. That was September. And then finally, here's October. So this October is unique in that we have um, we have a bottoming short volume, but still pretty high at about 49 and a half percent of almost 50 percent here. Um, but recognizing it was the Tuesday where we actually the day before the VIX ops op expiration that we risked off. Um, and then it wasn't um, it was later in the later the next week that we actually began to risk back on. So 
I'm just sharing that so that a you can't you don't get caught, but also I think it's really difficult to completely avoid a week of trading if there's only four weeks in the month. Um, and so hopefully just giving you again, you know these are analogs of the last three months in understanding the other content the the other pieces of the puzzle for the last three months um, is important. But just showing you those um, and then. Uh, so Henry, to, to to summarize on those, uh, is it coming into those top short volumes? Is that when you see uh, the, the market then really weaken? Yeah, I mean that's my I, I'm giving away all my secrets here. Uh, but yes, the this one is unique in that we already had like this. You know, near fifty percent is relatively high, and we did have rising short volumes but it was the, still the day before that we risked off. So recognizing the operate uh, um, expirations as a market-wide risk event. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I have my, as I pull this up, like I have the other things that I consider risk events is expirations and rebalances, pre-market data. These are like pitfalls that I don't want to have to go, oh, um, you know, I missed the boat on that. And so it's 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 a culmination of, you know, all of these things, including behavior like that's the other thing when I see. Um, you know, I'll wait for a dominant passive behavior before I turn on some risk through options expiration and there's a few other things I have to see, but, um, you know, if it, this is the Tuesday before, um, especially here, you know, we have a, a day of top short volume um i know sentiments falling you know this is a pretty good clear place where i could risk off and then knowing that that holding period can be a little bit longer potentially so that's all i have brian i hope i brought some value to you guys um i hope i don't lose my edge here guys <laughs> Well, Henry, the, the beauty is if we all jump onto your trading strategy, it makes it even better, right? It's uh, I think I'm wrong. You can short my ideas, um, <laughs> but I wouldn't do that. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, let me, I'm not going to go through all of these, uh, but I, I have a few uh, aha moments uh, of my own. So I, I have a few listed here. Like I said, we won't go through all of these. But uh, it, it's things that you learn over over time, and it's it's one of the beauty beauties to me of edge data. Uh, and and I'll start off just with number one. And I, boy, I can't tell you how many times over the years when I would personally trade that I would just get burned at market tops or bottoms. Uh, I would go into like a accelerating market too late or the market's been under pressure and I would buy it. I can remember back to the recession of uh, 2008, you know, aging myself here a little bit. Uh, but, you know, during that recession, I remember trying to, you know, a couple of times to time a bottom and I just got it wrong. And finally, I I just stopped. You know, I, I stopped trying to time a bottom because I didn't know. And uh, I didn't have edge, edge data uh, available to me. And as you guys are aware, uh, we have a very, very valuable tool, and and it's it it's very, very simple. Uh, it, it's as simple as a green line, and it's as simple as a red line. And Tim wrote about the green line, uh, you know, just a couple of days ago. He's he was like, green means go, uh, and it, and it's just that simple. You know, green means go, red means stop. Now recognize that under those parameters, uh, it's not always going to be as simple as this last period. You know, we came to uh, oversold conditions and the market actually, you know, just started to rise right when we got to those oversold conditions. That doesn't happen all the time. And we don't tend to have these types of steep advances. Uh, there were uh, conditions working in the market and I won't spend too much time on this, but what was happening as we started to rally, we were at month end. So 1030, uh, that was the month end timeframe. Passive investors were largely underweight equities. 
they started buying. Notice where we were from a short volume perspective as well. So we get passive money starting to buy equities. We come into early uh, November. Uh, we get that new month, new money trade uh, that's hitting. Notice what's happening as well. We continue to get short covering. So it was almost like a perfect storm. Uh, we were extremely oversold going into going into the end of the month, triggering these different activities, and and market participants were extremely short as well. And to a certain extent, as I think as we started to extend this move higher, it became a little bit of a pain trade where everyone had to start covering shorts, and we can see how that's ex started to extend here over the last few days. Uh, so I, I did want to explain, you know, the the uh, just this uh, breathtaking move higher. We don't often see that, but the the point here is green does mean go, red does mean stop. Uh, just recognize that sometimes that that go will it'll it'll usually take more than just one day. Usually finding a bottom is is a little bit let's call it messier than this bottom was. But recognize these parameters that we do have oversold conditions in the market. We do have, let's call it overbought conditions in the market. And it gives us a framework where we don't have to guess regarding our longs and shorts. Um, and I think that's really, really helpful. It's it saved me all the time. It saved me, quite honestly, over the last few months, you know, when I thought the market was perhaps you know, too oversold and I wanted to start buying and I would just have to like, okay, hold on, hold on a minute. Uh, you know, we, we haven't reached the green line yet. Uh, you know, if I'm looking at our big tech portfolio, you know, the setup doesn't look good yet there. So um, let, let's just say it saves me a lot of money. I don't have to guess at market tops and bottoms. Uh, and that's the first point I wanted to uh, talked about talk about today. Henry kind of covered this already, uh, but there is a predictable cadence to the market, and that falls into what we call context. I mentioned it in my note today. Very predictable cadence, uh, working around options expiration cycles, working around month to month timeframes, and also recognize that when we get to those periods, there are times when market participants have to move in the market. We saw that with passive money this this last month, that example that I that I just showed you. Uh, we'll see it sometimes during options expirations where uh, where counterparties to these big trades will sometimes have to move in the market. And you might have huge days where the Dow's up or down 400 points just recognize that those days are usually, uh, let's call it counterparties getting burned one way or the other. And if we come through those days, a lot of times that next day will be just the opposite activity because the counterparties were having to move uh, in the market itself. Uh, in terms of uh, the planning calendar, uh, Henry showed you what that looks like. Let me briefly show you how to get there if you're not familiar with it. It's under using edge, uh, just how it works. And then once that comes up, you're gonna go to resources, and then you can go to the planning calendar for 2023 or 2024. Uh, and down below here is the key for what everything uh, means. But what you're wanting to look for specifically on these calendars is the expiration cycle itself. Uh, for November, it's crystal clear. It, VIX expirations 15th, 15th, 16th, 17th. Here's that month end time frame uh, dealing with that T plus two window, so trade day plus two settlement days. You can see December is slightly different, and it's I think it's every three months where we have a variation in the cycle. You can see it's sept September, December. Uh, and it's VIX expirations, where VIX expirations will sometimes uh, fall the following week. Uh, but this uh, planning calendar uh, is is there on the website, and it just really helps to understand that that rhythm or cadence of the market. So uh, today, November 9th, 
uh, you can see just from a calendar perspective, you know, market participants are going to start getting ready for expirations, or at least it'll be in the back of their mind. You know, are we making money on our trades? Uh, you know, do we want to try to push rights to shares into the money? If we can, obviously that takes some effort. Uh, you know, do we want to tr tr try that type of trade? Uh, you know, are, are, are we losing money? Do we want to get out of a trade? So just be thinking about some of those parameters and the way that market participants uh, have to think about, you know, expirations themselves. I think I have time maybe for one or two more points today. Uh, the third point ties in very much with number two. Uh, if you have followed Edge for any length of time, uh, you recognize that market cycles tend to be very, very short. A lot of times there'll be a couple weeks uh, at a time going from highs to lows. If they're longer than a couple weeks, they don't tend to be longer than a month. The point here, and you could you could do it with selling opportunities as well. If you miss a buying opportunity, uh, don't worry about it too much because an another opportunity is likely going to come back around let's say within a month or so, it might even be a shorter time frame than that. Uh, so you don't have necessarily have to chase things. Things are gonna come back to you over a period of time. Uh, just think about this last month where passive investors were underweight. They had to make moves at month end, lifting the market. The same thing is going to work if they get uh, too overweight, there's gonna be selling activity to bring the market back down. Once again, everything is going to go back towards the mean or back towards the average. Sometimes it will take a little while, but recognize uh, those things uh, do play out in the market itself. Um, I'm actually going to point out number six, and then I'll stop with my points. Uh, for me, I'm learning that there's times to be cautious and there's times to be bold. If the market structure setup is really good, I need to be bold. You know, even if the market itself is going against me a little bit uh, over time and over the last few years from watching this data, I know the data is really, really good, especially, you know, when it comes around these market uh, tops and market bottoms. And I can be a little bit more bold around my positioning, you know, with with those types of tops and bottoms. Now, of course, uh, I'm, I'm like you. I want to sleep at night. So my bold positions need to be such that I can sleep at night and so I don't have to watch, you know, every single tick of every uh, single trade during the course of the day. Nobody wants to do that. But I can be bold within certain parameters and know that edge works and the setups that I'm that I'm doing uh, work as well. Uh, so I'll stop my sharing there. Uh, Henry, did we have any questions that we haven't uh, addressed yet? Uh, yeah, Gary, or sorry, Glenn Myers was, um, wanted us to look at um, uh, W Wayfair, um, which I pulled it up. Um, okay. Do you want to go ahead and share that? Yeah. Um, and what I'll show is, uh, so so Gary, I pulled up, um, or so, sorry, Glenn. Uh, Glenn, I pulled up. Uh, it, I looked at the profile on Wayfair, um, and first I just searched, you know, W up here. Um, what I would, and I said, oh yeah, this is like, you know, we have supply demand divergence, we have broad market sentiment rising, um, and we have demand at nine. Uh, supply is at forty-five percent, which I think is pretty good, um, and the trends down here you know the the behavior is active my only you know my only concern so so the, yeah this is a really i think this is like an excellent example um of wayfair my only concern is um within this portfolio once i pulled it up is um is just looking at the overall um you know the overall condition of the of the last few days of the lo the long move in the last few days and then um even this this consumer discretionary uh, short volumes falling. So, um, so yeah, this is a great, I think this is a pretty good setup. You know, the volatility, I think I just checked on it, you know, the volatility is down six and a half percent. Where did it go? Um, 
you know, the, the volatility today is down six and a half percent. Um, so that's the kind of thing that I think um, I'm a little concerned with the the last probably hour of the of the trading day with jumping in anything right now. Um, but yeah, those are the setups um, that we're looking for. If if we weren't, you know, extended to a six and a half, you know, a six percent um, move most recently. But um, I, I, yeah, this these are the kind of setups that we're looking for. I think that that's a great example to show everybody. Hey, let's take a quick look at AMD, if we can. Yeah, that's Brian. You want to take that one? Absolutely. Well, I, I love oh, that interesting question. when you when you, when you look at when you look at broad market sentiment, one could make the case that going in, in the next week we could you know see the market you know uh, you know turn back down again minus what maybe Powell said today. But when you look at AMD, uh, reported earnings was you know good earnings really kind of saved semiconductor, mm -hmm. thankfully. But now you've got you've got demand rising. Yeah higher than it's been in a long time, along with uh, supply. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's so, kind of the yeah. interesting thing where, go ahead. No, you can finish your thought, please. Go ahead. So it's just, you know, it's just a point, okay, it's, it's obviously it's on its way to 10, maybe today it stops, but at some point you got to think that it's going to top out and then they're going to have to work off that, that supply and that's going to work against the stock price. You're, that would be exactly my observation. Uh, you know, recognize that when short volumes are rising, uh, you can continue to move higher for a period of time, but it's all um, it all depends on that demand side of things. Once once demand starts to falter, that's when high short volumes will will weigh on on equity pricing. Uh, so, you know, yes, this has been moving higher over time. You know, it, it did much, much better. Did, did you notice that? Uh, the, the advances were much stronger when short volumes were high. Once short volumes have become greater, it's weighed on, weighed on the advances a little bit. So, you know, I would certainly be hesitant to move into AMD from a long position you know, I would actually be looking at that more from a, from a short trade here over the next, you know, two, three days, four days. Yeah, I just yeah. thought it was a good example just to what well, just to watch that that effect take take place and see how it plays out next. Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and to the point, uh, Henry, did you have another question or observation? Well, no. I mean, I think one of the things we talk about, Brian, is is as stocks rise, that um, those, those to me, I see that and I go, that's a really hard stock to short because it can just run and run and run. Um, and what we tend to see is as these short volumes rise, those will, um, you know, that will actually cause us the stock price to keep going up. Those are those, um, those, uh, the ones that can really push higher. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, the bottom will fall out quickly. Um, but my point more than all of that was that NVIDIA's very similar look. AMD and you know I'd much prefer to look for something that has lower short volume um hasn't risen as much and then um you know size up in something like that more so than you, you know potentially chase something with really high demand with well, really high demand you or do when you sorry really high short volume yeah my apologies. yeah and one of the things you want to do, like if you're going to follow an AMD or an NVIDIA and Edge, what I do is I set up a portfolio that covers all the components of SMH or especially just the big caps. And you can see that AMD is kind of going against the trend because semiconductor demand is rising while supply is fat, flat just below 50. So it'll be interesting to see how AMD performs in the wake of its peers going in a different direction from a portfolio yeah, yeah, I, I I like that idea with the SMH. That's uh, that's good. Thank you. Um, I kind of getting to the end of our time. I do want to take a peek at uh, broad market sentiment here before we uh, before we take off. And I mean, right now it continues to to look good. I haven't looked at the markets uh, since before this meeting started. I know we were coming under a little pressure after uh, Chairman uh, Chairman Powell's. Uh, remarks, but presently we're continuing to get uh, 
increasing demand and you know declining short volumes. So it, it remains a positive setup for the time being. Uh, to, I think what will be of interest to me is looking at the data tomorrow, and I'll make sure to you know let everyone know in tomorrow's uh, market desk note whether there's been any changes. You know, were market participants surprised by what Powell said today? Uh, you know, is it only a fast trading move today? So as we look at the data tomorrow, we'll have a better uh, assessment, you know, of, uh, of that itself. For now, it remains a, uh, a bullish look taken in the overall context. And I mentioned this in, in this morning's note. The context here is, you know, extremely sharp advances in a very short time frame. You know, when moves are this sharp in the market, you do have to take them into consideration, recognizing that for a period of time, there should be consolidation. We've had that pricing consolidation here over the last three days, and we'll just have to see how, what that means then as we get closer to expirations next week. You know, does this type of move trigger a little bit of profit taking going into expirations itself? It's kind of one of those uh, stay tuned. You know, we don't know right now. Right now, this still points bullish, but we'll let the data, you know, speak for us and not try not try to guess. Uh, Henry, did we catch everything for for the chat room? Yeah, I think I think we did. There's um, at least a time. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I think if there aren't any other questions, um, you know, I think that was a great point is we do have sentiment rising, but the mm -hmm. our expected volatility has been so high to the upside that, you know, those two forces are pulling against each other as we see right now. Right, right. Well, everyone, uh, as always, uh, thanks for thanks for jumping on the uh, the call today. We greatly appreciate uh, not only you guys joining us, but your interaction with us. It it certainly helps us to grow uh, as as traders and to continue to improve this product. So I wish you all just a wonderful Thursday uh, and uh, have a great weekend if we don't uh, touch base with you guys uh, later during the next couple of days. We'll catch you later.